Remember what reality, truth, the God idea is. We don't really know. But what but that it is, the fact of it, has language. And that's what language really is, you see. It's each individual's ability to identify existence. And we, it's language. Without language, we wouldn't know that we were. It's the identity that I consciously am. It's when I have it means something else that it gets me in trouble. But I do know that I consciously am. Okay? So, the world of language, the world of the human condition, occurs in the mode of paradox. The dictionary tells us that paradox is a statement or proposition seemingly self-contradictory or absurd, but in reality expressing a possible truth, a self-contradictory and false proposition. Okay? Paradox is any person, thing, or situation exhibiting an apparently contradictory nature. So it is a contradiction. And the contradiction shows up in the fact that it is not, and yet it is. It's not what we say it is, but it is what it is. It's exactly to the point. I am not a human being learning to be divine. I'm a divine being learning to allow the humanity to look like it looks and not complain about it. You can complain if you want, but that's, uh, you know, that's up to you. You might like that mode of living, so all right, be my guest. <laughs> All right. Now this line I have drawn represents everything seen, heard, felt. All the stuff of human living and how we describe it. It could be rich or poor, sick or well. Notice that it doesn't matter which one's positive and which one's negative. They're just two ends of the stick. So it can be positive in one case, negative in the next, and on and on. But you have these extremes in human living. And you're always somewhere along the line So when I have rich poor, what am I describing? What am I talking about? Opposites. Opposites. Well, so is sick well, but what is rich poor? Language. Yeah, For what? The door is language. What is rich poor? Points of view. So is the door. What's rich poor? Abundance. abundance. Thank you. Okay, so we've got abundance. Okay, what about sick well? Oh. Yeah, I should have put... <laughs> this is a gifted class. <laughs> and this should have been a capital A there. Abundance, health. <laughs> I'm always asking trick questions. Um, okay. So, so th this will be sufficient for, for what I want to say right now. So oh, this is the, um, this is what I call paradox. This is the realm of paradox right here. And it, it is the way things look on the human level of living. Somewhere in here is everything we see, feel, hear, taste, touch on every 
every subject you can think of. Abundance and health are the two we're talking about now. What I want you to realize is that none of this would even appear in the picture of human living if this were not present. There is no paradox without being. There is no humanity without divinity. This area up here we call source. This area down here is the appearance, the look, the concept. I didn't spell that right. A N C E. There. Um, this is the view. Now, really take a look. Everything that I encounter all the time, wherever I am, walking the streets as Betty, is in here. And it's only possible for it to be here because being is here, because source is present and active. See, just, just for a second, consider that. We have lots of human behavior that's extreme. You know, we have terrorists, we have Ebola, we have all kinds of stuff going on. It is important to know that if it shows up here, this is the source. You got that? Everybody got that? Okay, if this is the source, why do I experience fear here? You know why? I'm not acknowledging source. Yeah, I don't know any better. Yeah, it's ignorance. So when I'm afraid of something, there's something I'm not recognizing. It's as simple as that. We can make it sound simple in words. And if words solved it, we wouldn't be sitting here talking right now. It's the living of it as, as the fact that makes the difference. It's living yourself wherever you see yourself with this recognition that flips your world over. Now you may call it a miracle or you may call it healing or whatever, but that's the mechanism going on. You can't have this without this. You can't have any evidence, any um, identity picture, unless you have a source for it. I've changed the language a lot in talking about this because I want you to begin to see that there is a science here. It's not a religion. It's actually a science of being the nature of things. Now, do you want to say something about that, Ken? And what's powerful about that is that there's no... Um, there's living, living that being, there's no... You're not trying to change the appearance from, from rich to poor, from poor to sick. You're living the acknowledgement. Yeah, when does that occur? It should be instant. Yeah, and it occurs when you are consciously aware, right? Right. Yeah, when you get this, mm -hmm. then that's where you are. You're living here, taking a look. Living here, this is what shows up. Living here, shows up. What happens when you start living here? You get lots more of that. That's right. Then you have, oh dear, oh dear, what am I going to do about that? Oh my goodness, everything's falling apart. Yeah. It is extremely simple. It is so simple we miss it all the time. That's why I come back to it and come back to it and come back to it. We get lost in this doing this stuff. We still feel like, I mean, I don't care how much you do, you will still look around for the human footsteps that are going to identify that this is really true. 
You couldn't have the footsteps without this. Without source, you have no footsteps. But the footsteps don't make any difference at all. None. They have no impact. They're your comfort level you're satisfying. Your perfection is established at the beginning. The end is from the beginning. The fact that you did this and this and this, and then guess what? This showed up. And now, everything looks rosy. That's just up to you. That's all language. That's all the, the thing that was your comfort zone level. That kind of thing. It is not required to have this stuff going on to be whole. Whole is where I start. It's the only thing present. If my view is that I've got to have 15 human footsteps to get there, we walk through our sentences all the time, but we're the ones sentencing ourselves. If you understand the science of your own existence, then you don't have that war going on. And you aren't concerned. You know, it's, um, what is it, it's like the, the one that, where did they go? They went someplace anyway, and they couldn't get to their pills, and without the pills, they were going to die. You know, and so there was this, well, we will get them. You know, we all live on hope. We will get them. We will be able to get back there, and we will get them. So on we went and discovered that several days down the trail without the pills, we hadn't died yet. <laughs> Do you know? Miracle. Total miracle. But we did get back, and then we got the pills. And everything is really okay now. That happens a lot. You know, there's, an, there's even an example, I think, in, uh, in Science and Health, Mrs. Eddy's writing, uh, of the actor on the stage that was decrepit, and he sat trembling in a chair, and when the cue came, he got up and went on the stage and did his thing. And then he went back and sat in the chair and trembled. You know, there's no way to um, bypass that because that's our own, uh, what, indulgence of who we think we are. And until you can live yourself as the God idea in action, you're going to be living here looking for this. You're going to be living the language appearance and researching your source. And that's very much what human living looks like. 